This difference of square stuff, once again, it goes away if you can factor by grouping. Um, the problem is, is it takes a little know-how to understand what it is. I'm going to point this out, all right? We're dealing with trinomials here. This one's a binomial, technically, but we can turn it into a trinomial if we want. That just, it just doesn't have to make any sense. All right. These are the kind you guys hope to see on the test, right? <laughs> Whatever the case. So well, let's look at this one. We got, uh, just looking back at the rule, we got a squared minus b squared. Then we should end up with a minus b times a plus b, which would be the factored form of this stuff. So if we can figure out what a and b are, we can rewrite this stuff just instead of a and b, we'll have some values or expressions there. So <clears throat> my a looks like it's just going to be x, because this would be x squared, and that's my a. 81 is a perfect square as well. That's going to be 9 squared with the minus between. So difference of squares, my b is 9. So just to, I'm going to rewrite this out, but without the a and b, I've got minus and plus. <coughs> then I'm going to put the a where it goes in the front of both of these, and the b where it goes as the second term in both binomials. That is all. <coughs> all right, so we got x squared minus 81. The problem is we usually factor by grouping, uh, and when we do that, we need three terms. And then we're just kind of splitting up that middle term, right? So what this means is that I've got x squared plus 0 minus 81. See how that gave us a third term? Not only that, but some of you guys know that that middle term usually has an x. That's great. That didn't change the value of the expression. It just changed it so that we can factor by grouping. Well, negative 81, uh, we need the two factors of 81. Let's look at those the sum of those two factors to be zero because that's our, in this case, it would be the B value. 81, you're either going to get 1 and 81. That's no good. You can get 3 and 27. That's not close to zero. But 9 and 9 is in good shape. Uh, in fact, uh, since it's a negative 81, one of these has to be negative. So I'm going to add these two together and I will get zero. So, that allows us to split the 0x up. We got x squared plus 9x minus 9x minus 81. And it doesn't matter where you put the positive or negative 9x. And if we factor these by grouping, I'll factor out an x. So that gives me x plus 9. And the second one, the second two here, because that'd be plus... I'm going to factor out a negative 9, which gives me x plus 9. And I can factor out now an x plus 9 from both of these terms. And what do I have left over? x minus 9. And that's, that, as it turns out, is what we got in the first place. So 